Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carolyn and today we're going to make a little round trinket box. So I have already pre-sanded and stained this box. This little round cardboard piece is going to be how we're going to upholster the inside. I'm just tracing a little piece of white felt. We're going to cut that out. So you don't really have to use felt. I just did because I think it makes um, the box feel a little more finished because it gives it a little bit of a plush feel to it instead of just using the fabric over the cardboard. And then we're going to wrap this really pretty red crushed velvet fabric around this piece. Make sure to flip it upside down so we don't have any pencil marks on our fabric that we can see. And there's definitely much better ways to do this in the ways that I'm doing it. I have not done my research on how to properly upholster boxes. So keep in mind, I don't know what I'm doing. And you can use a, um, a fabric or a wood glue for this, but I use this, what's pretty much an industrial strength adhesive that smells absolutely terrible. Don't use this. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted a strong bond because I'm going to be selling this piece. So I wanted to make sure that it would never come apart. It won't come apart. This stuff is strong. If you're gonna use this stuff, please wear gloves. Please open a window. All right, then we're just gonna attach our little poster, upholstered, I can't speak, piece to the inside. And if you're gonna spread this stuff around with a brush, make sure it's a brush that you do not care about because this stuff will gunk it up forever. I just use a paintbrush cup to stamp it down a little bit. So here it is all upholstered, it's dry. The fabric's a little bit loose, but I don't really mind that too much. I think it looks kind of nice. Now we're going to work on the lid. This is just plain black Sculpey clay. Ran that through my pasta roller, you don't have to roll it through a pasta roller, it just makes things easier for me. Cut out a little piece. You can see me trying to figure out what I want to do with this. Um, I decided to make a little round piece to fit in the middle first, and then I was going to make other pieces to surround the round piece so it uh, fit the box better. Here I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid Sculpey, it's a lot, uh, no it's not a little, that's a lot, that's too much, don't use that much. And then I'm going to make sure it's centered on this. And then I wanted to create a texture on the top. Um, I have this little scrap resin piece that I ended up saving that ended up being very helpful for making a cool texture so it wasn't just flat. Here's another just scrap piece that I used to texture everything. And then for the details, I'm going to use this little leaf mold. Now the mold here, I did get it off of Amazon, but I do highly encourage you to support your local craft shops or small independent artists instead. Shameless plug, I am also a small artist, in case you didn't know. So support me. Just kidding. And also you probably don't have to use liquid Sculpey to attach everything. I just do because I don't want anything falling off. And it just gives me peace of mind that it's all going to stick to the wood. This was another one of my projects where I kind of didn't know exactly what, how I wanted this to turn out. Um, I kind of just have a certain aesthetic that I really like. So pretty much anything that falls within like a little bit of dark and spooky with a lot of glitter is pretty much the things that I like. So sometimes it's okay to not have a plan and just... Um, Find a little mold that you like, find a color you like, go ham, like, just figure it out as you go. That's what makes this fun. What I actually really love is that this ended up, um, kind of taking the shape of a little pumpkin at the end. You'll see that, um, in the end videos, but this was really cool. I d wouldn't have expected to try to make this box look like a pumpkin, even though it's round and it's cute. Pumpkins are also round and cute, but... Yeah, it was a good surprise at the end. Sometimes it's nice just to see where your projects take you. And then I decided to use this cute little like maple leaf bowl to get some more details around the edges because I thought the edges to this was a, were 
a little bit too sharp, so I wanted to soften it out a bit. Just putting some dots of glue around where um, I want my little leaves to be. And then after I was happy with where all the leaves were placed, I started to put in these little vine type of details. I just rolled out little snakes of clay and placed them where I thought it would look cool. Next I'm working on the middle. I kind of wanted I did kind of want it originally to look like a little little plants were growing out of it and I did want a handle for the lid. So I made this little round piece and thought I could build around that. And then I just made a little snake type of vine with a piece of uh, clay. And after I placed that, I made a bunch more little vine type of details around the bottom and then just stuck them all on. This is how it looked when it was done uh, being sculpted. I actually really like it. And then I used some Arteza mica powders to put on some different variations of very shiny green. I made sure to spread out the different colors to make sure there wasn't just one color in one area and one color in another area. I wanted them to be rather spread out so it created different variations and it was interesting to look at. And just letting you know that these mica powders will stick to the wet clay. But if you bake the clay first and then you try to put the mica powders on top of it, it won't stick. You can always mix them with a varnish, but then it just won't be as opaque. It'll be rather um, uh, transparent. But that's another look you could go for if you wanted to try that. I've done it to varnish some pieces and it turned out really nice. Or if you didn't want it to be as shiny, you can always just paint it with um, regular acrylic paints. I also have the Arteza acrylic paint set. There's a lot of different colors to choose from and I really love those. But I'm also slightly addicted to buying art supplies that I don't necessarily need, so keep that in mind. I'm just making sure to get all of this powder into the um, crevices, make sure everything's covered properly. Looks like it. And then it's into the oven. And then after everything is baked, I'm just going to give it a thin coat of my Verithane polyurethane varnish. I've heard that this varnish works the best out of all the other varnishes that are on the market, just because some of the acrylic type of varnishes that you use for paint can make the clay sticky. I mean, I haven't tried any varnish besides this one. This one works extremely well for me and what I do. If you found one that worked well for you, let me know in the comments because I'm always looking for new um, new things to eat. All right, here it is all finished. I think it turned out really, really nice. It's so pretty and shiny. It looks like a little pumpkin. There's the inside. And as always, if you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. The link to my Etsy shop will be down in the description if you want to check this guy out. And thank you so much for tuning in. Later.